God's voice. God's voice. God's voice. When you read this out loud and you hear the word, you have heard God's voice. Remember what I said when we opened? It just struck me as I was walking up front. There's such a presence of God in here. His holiness and righteousness in here. His love is here. His care is here. His nurturing nature is here. Everything is here. But remember something. His voice will always come to you in love. It may come to you in correction. When I'm in trouble with the Lord, you know what He does? He turns me to stuff. <laughs> turns me to stuff. And I hear His voice. <laughs> Be holy, for I am holy. <laughs> this week I was told, just get about my business and stay out of my way. <laughs> I wanted to help God again. <laughs> I just wanted to help him out. I just wanted to help him out. He says, you don't need, I don't need your help. I need you to be obedient. The problem with obedience is when you have an obedient walk with the Lord Jesus Christ, you will hear His voice. The word obedience, the state or fact or instance of obeying, or a willingness to obey. Oh, notice how quiet it just got? A willingness to obey. If you don't have a willingness to obey, you're rebellious. That's a bold, something bad, but we all have it. Because every one of you was born with Adam and Eve's nature, which is rebellion towards God. You all have it. It's not something you don't have. You can be as born again, as spirit-filled, refined by fire, over and over again by God, but you still have a rebellious nature you're going to drag along with you on your way to heaven. So don't think that just gets burned up in fire. That gets burned up when you get your heavenly body on, when you go home to be in glory. Amen? Amen. The thing about obedience, when you have a willingness to obey, first of all, you're going to be put to the test. God says, I'm going to test your heart. It's oh, getting really quiet now, isn't it? It also means submission. How many of you freely submit to governing authorities, to the government? How many of you, when you were children, freely submitted to the will of your parents without correction? <laughs> See what I'm saying? Submission. Especially when you've been through stuff in life. I know too many of you in here. Some of us, the things we went through as children, no child should ever have to go through what we did. Then you come to God, and you come to other people, and God says, come and submit to me. But when you're a child, and you're abused, the word submission is a terrifying word. When I first got saved, I had all this grace that we sang about today. I'm a holy God. But when he started pulling that back, and he started showing me what was still inside, that lack of submission, it was all grace in the beginning, and all the Holy Ghost. But inside, when he pulled back, all that damage as a child I went through, and the rest of you started to manifest. Mm -hmm. Then when God said, submit, no, I'm just going to be molested again. It's a scary thought, and it hurts. But His love will come and heal you from that. He will teach you to forgive. And then submitting to the one who made you in His image becomes a lot easier. You'll see that the love of Christ will come touch what you've been through, will restore your soul, and make you a vessel of God's love to help others that have been through that stuff. We go through stuff in life. Does God desire it? Of course not. God is love. God is pure. God is holy. He's never come to harm us. He doesn't know how. He will pull His grace back if we get stubborn and don't submit to His Lordship. There's also another word that comes from obedience. Obedient. Not obedience. Suggest a giving in to orders or instruction from one in authority or control. 
when Jesus walked before his father, his whole thing was, not my will, your will be done. How many of you freely submit to God that way? Got quiet again. Got quiet again. He loves you. He's, he's going to say some things to you if you have ears to hear and a heart to hear the voice of God that are going to hurt. You know why they're going to hurt? Because it's going to reveal truths about yourself you've been in denial to. Of what's in you, some of your wrong thinking, some of your wrong attitudes, and how you've seen yourself, how others have spoken about you, but not ever the way your Father looks at you in heaven. Your Father looks at you as His creation. He looks at you actually through the cross because it says all things are created by, for, through, and consist in Jesus Christ. He has made you. When you read that in Colossians, remember something. When the Father sees you, He sees the work of the Son. Because it was through the Son of God that you were all made in your mother's womb. Remember something. All things flow from heaven. When you study Psalm 139 sometime, study that, and you'll see that when you were in your mother's womb, your mother and father didn't do that. God was in that womb molding you and making you, saying, going to be this tall, going to be this high, going to be that wide, going to have this many teeth, their ears are going to be this big. And he already knew that. Yeah, well, he doesn't have to count too many on my head, hallelujah. Um, but the thing that's a blessing, it's why I'm already a hairstylist, I knew what I was doing. Um, the thing that's beautiful about God, so think about that. Go back to the womb. See who made you. See who made you. Did He want the damage that happened to you in life to happen to you? Of course not. But since Adam and Eve, we've had darkness in the world. But He came so we can walk in the power of His healing light to touch us and restore us, to make us one again with Him. That's why you don't want to hear His voice because He's going to touch stuff in you and it's going to hurt. You're going to have to relive some stuff. But if you give Him permission, He's going to meet you there. And He's going to hold you. And He's going to carry you through it. And He's going to restore you. Let the pain come up. Let it happen. Because His love and His grace and His care for you are going to fix it. He is the only one that can take a wounded wineskin and make it brand new. He's the only one that made the sun come up today. He's the one that put the snow on that mountain. He's the one that enabled birds to fly and fish to swim. He is the one that did that. How could you not want to hear a loving Amen. voice that bowed his head and said, Father, it is finished. Oh. Amen. How could you not want to hear that voice? How? If you have your Bibles, turn to 1 Samuel 28. I've always... Samuel and David... David was prepared to be a king. But like America, we want kings in our government instead of leaders. We have for a lot of years. It's not just recently this has happened in America. Now, we have to pray that we have godly leaders again. Holy leaders. People say, you're a pastor, you can't talk about that. Yes, I can. You know why? Because God said I can. God said, fear no man. I am for you. I will defend you. I will protect you. I will take care of you. There's no weapons formed against me. We'll prosper. Because God said so. That's the voice of God in here today. Amen. But with Saul and David, David was prepared from the time he was a little boy to be a ruler. He watched God do great things. Saul had to look. He came from a good bloodline. He was strong. He was powerful. He looked all that. What he was, yeah. Well, that's why we watch you. Okay. Um, so, that being said though, Saul was not prepared. He said, you don't want me to be king over you anymore? No, we want, we want a king. We want a person. We don't want God to be over us. Look what's happened to America since 62 when we threw God out of the classroom. We told God we didn't need Him. Look what's happened to our children. Oh my God. Shame on us for allowing God. Bless you. This is so important that you get a hold of this. Now Samuel's already died. Saul's already in a whole lot of trouble. So what does Saul do? When you stop hearing and you get unsubmissive and you don't obey the voice of God, 
this is what you do. Wherever you got you in trouble, you go back to trouble. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's why the Bible says, choose your friends wisely, for the wicked will surely lead you astray. When I got delivered from a lifetime of darkness, I didn't go back out and hang on the same corners where I sold drugs, okay? Didn't go there. Did I go back in the streets later on, months down the road, to help minister to them? Of course I did. Spent six years in the middle of a gang war. Okay, fine, because I came from those streets. So it didn't bother me. I wasn't seduced back into darkness because I walked in the power of light. But I went back into those streets when He sent me. Too many of us want to go back and feel comfortable like going back to Egypt. There's nothing in Egypt for you but darkness, okay? And more slavery, another prison, and more bondage. We've been set free from bondage and walk in the freedom and the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. In 1 Samuel 28, chapter, verses 15 to 18, <coughs> now Saul, he went and consulted a medium, a spiritualist and stuff, that prayed for the dead and all that other stuff. Oh, God. Don't go there. Now Samuel said, now this is after he's been risen up. The medium raises Saul up. What chapter? That's the 28th, uh, no. 1 Samuel. Is it 28 or is it 22? Did I write Okay. I'll be alright. Now Samuel said to Saul, now remember something, the medium has risen Saul up. Samuel. Samuel up. He's already gone. All right, here a man is in trouble with God. The Philistines are coming to conquer him. They're coming against Israel. And what does Saul do? Goes right back to a medium, brings Saul up, brings Samuel up from the dead. Really, folks? When you get in trouble, don't go looking for anybody else. Go to your knees. Amen. Why have you disturbed me and brought me up? And Saul answered, I am deeply distressed, for the Philistines make war against me. God has departed from me. No kidding. <laughs> Does not and does not answer me anymore, neither by prophets nor by dreams. Remember what I said before, God will come to you in many ways and speak to you. Don't look for the natural response from God, because He can come in many different forms. He's Elohim, the God of many faces. Amen? Amen? Therefore I have called you that you may reveal to me what I should do. Then Samuel said, so why do you ask me? Seeing the Lord has departed from you and has become your enemy. And the Lord has done <laughs> for himself as he spoke by me. For the Lord has torn the kingdom out of your hand and given it to your neighbor David. Talk about hurt for hurt on that one. Not only is God your enemy now, here, watch me give you the kingdom to somebody else. Oh, God have mercy. Because you did not, what? Obey, Obey. the voice of the Lord, nor execute his fear, fierce wrath upon Amalek. Therefore, the Lord has done this thing to you this day. Oh my God. When you get in trouble with God, and you will. The John, don't, but the rest of us do. Now that being said, guess what? Don't turn back. Don't go to people. It says, come, let us reason together. And I'll clean all this up. I'll make you as white as snow again. And then you come walk with me. See what I'm saying? When, when stuff happens, you drop the ball, okay, fine. Join the rest of us. Because you're all going to do it. I hate to sit here and tell you you're going to drop the ball, but you're going to. You're going to. I found out Michelle wasn't perfect last week. <laughs> Talk about shooting the guy down. Um, that was right after finding out my wife wasn't perfect. Oh, man, now I'm really... Whoa! Um, but get, see what I'm saying, though? We need to laugh at ourselves because we are not perfect, but the perfect one has come to live within us. And He will keep you on the highway of holiness and righteousness, the plumb line of righteousness, if you let Him. If you let Him. So fall on your knees. Don't turn back to the world. Don't talk about what got you out of trouble last time, because if God would have been the one that delivered you last time, you wouldn't be in it this time. That's right. Oh, how about that? How about that? If He got you out of trouble from certain things before, because you tried to do it yourself and said, okay, yeah, I got this. And he fixed everything. Okay, now you're walking again. You got it. Something happens again. Same thing over and over. That means you never let God, you didn't acknowledge as the one who did like Steve. The Holy Spirit led us to pray for him Friday night. Stop what you're doing. The girls, everybody was singing and worshiping. Blue so far as walked over with oil on his head. He's restored. Thank you. He was restored to Calvary. God heals. 
I've got too many people. That was that was then. This is no. God has always been the healer. He always will be the healer. Amen. 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 And we believe that God says, if you believe in my name and you follow me, these signs, wonders, and miracles will follow you. You will pray for the sick, and they will be healed. It happens. It happens all the time because I'm living proof of God restoring a broken down body that was on his deathbed. Don't tell me God don't raise the dead. Yes, he does. And every one of you are dead, maybe not physically, but spiritually before Jesus got you. It is so important you can't hear his voice, but the penalty of not obeying, of not obeying his voice is costly. So many Christians go, well, I got this. God's not concerned. Yes, he is concerned. He's concerned with every day you wake up because he ordained that day just for you and him. Amen. People don't realize Amen. something, that it's an individual relationship with Jesus Christ. We all have that. Are we a body of one here? Yes, we are. But you've got to remember something. Your calling and your election by God was made sure at Calvary. That was where the blood washes you. The Holy Spirit seals you. You belong to God now. You have an individual walk with God for the purposes God made you. Not for your family, not for your friends, not for your bosses. You were made for Jesus' glory and nobody else's. Start getting that in your heart and you'll hear His voice today. Amen. But don't turn back to the old ways because the old ways will get it torn from you. Now the gifts and the calling, it says in Romans, are irrevocable. But what they will do, He will take them from you and give them to another if you don't want to do it His way. Bless you. There's no more Burger King Christianity. You can't have it your way. You can go into the pizza joints and get whatever toppings you want. There's one topping here. His name's Jesus. He's the head of the church. That's it. It ends right there. He's the head of the church. We're His servants. We're His children. We're ordained by God. We're set aside for God's glory. And it's time we embrace that oneness, the individuality that all of you have with Christ. Stop looking around. Don't look back to this one, that one, this used to, this woulda, this coulda. You know what I think of all that stuff. Well, the hogs eat all that. Okay? Now, let's get it straight. Because you're not going to hear God's voice if you don't want an individual walk with Him. Remember something? God brought you here this morning, but not for my purposes, for His. Because He wants to build you up in the most holy faith so you walk empowered by the Holy Ghost. Amen. And this world can't touch you there. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, hallelujah. When I pray for the church, we were up half the night last night praying and stuff. And I went back in the office this morning. He turned me to something and put this in the, in the sermon this morning. I didn't know why. The body of Christ as a whole, when you read in Revelations... Now, this isn't the whole body, but it's a good portion of it because it's become worldly. The world was supposed to stay out, out of the church buildings and out of the body, but it's infested in it now. It's taken root. So in the third chapter, I think it is, right, right down here. Third chapter of Revelation, it's about the dead church. They knew of God. They knew of it. God said, I know your works. You say you're alive, but you are dead. Yes, yeah, the third chapter... Verses 1 through 6. And in verse 6 it says, He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Now there's one church, there were seven churches that went out into all the world. God is calling the church to come alive again. But it doesn't come alive because it can't hear His voice. You know why? Because they're too busy about the world's business instead of God's business. You know, I'm telling you, most Christians don't prosper, don't have an abundance of everything because they're too busy doing it the world's way instead of God's way. You want to run a business? Open the book of Proverbs. Even if you're not a believer and you ran a business according to the book of Proverbs, God would bless it. You know why? Because His Word says it will. Now, will that money get you to heaven? Of course not. This is your only way in. But He will still honor that if you do it His way. And hopefully after you study the book of Proverbs and the Bible long enough, you're going to go, wow, this wasn't me from the beginning, was it? This was all you. If you want to be blessed and prosper and have all the blessings that God has for you, do it His way. Desire a heart and ears to hear what the Spirit would tell you. 
Because then you will see the fullness of God in your life. And I'm telling you, the, he told me that he had me put that in there last night and this morning. It started coming to me and then this morning says, no, that has to be in there. Because people have to realize why the body of Christ is so dead and why the healings don't happen everywhere because we don't even talk about it anymore. We talk about what the government's doing, what the world is doing, the wars, the end of days, and all the other nonsense they preach. No, we preach Jesus Christ has risen here and He's going to bless you, He's going to heal you, He's going to prosper you, He's going to protect you. That's what God's voice would tell every one of us today. Because every time you open that book, the only thing I see in there is a love story. And the one who wrote it and authored it is the Holy Spirit. And God's not a man that He can lie. So that's the infallible Word of God that you can trust with every breath you take. So you should desire, above all things, to hear His voice. But it's going to be contrary to your little plans. Because your plans are this big. It's how big they're. They're not even that big. They're thinner than that. They're that thin. He made the universe. His voice spoke it into existence. Amen. And you don't want to hear that? Oh, I do. I don't like it some days. When I get corrected, it doesn't feel good. Because then you go, <laughs> and then you repent. And then I get up and you know what? It's so easy for God to correct. After so many years, you should be easily correctable. It should be easy for God to correct you. Because you should realize more who He is and who you're not. <laughs> you should realize you still got this stuff you're fighting every day. Give the battle to the one that already overcame your flesh. That's been coming to me more and more lately. He said that they listen to my voice, they would hear that when I said it is finished, I overcame the power of sin and death. Because that cross couldn't hold me. The tomb couldn't hold me. And this universe can't contain me. So my power is that great. My voice is that powerful. So God has already overcome all your sins, all your struggles, and everything, but we don't give it back to Him. We should be walking in victory because He's overcome everything you're going to go through. It isn't something you have to achieve. You just got to take the finished work of the cross with you. What's His name? Arthur Blessed walked around the whole world with a cross on His back. Nothing touched Him. You know why? Because He took the cross with Him. Nothing can stand up to this. All we can do is bow to it. Amen. And so will this whole world if you walk with the cross before you. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, come alive today. If you got your Bible, turn to Psalm 29. Let's talk about God's voice. Amen. We said give thanks. Let's give thanks for the voice of God today. Verses 3 to 5, Psalm 29. The voice of the Lord is over the waters. The glory of the Lord thunders. The Lord is over many waters. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is full of majesty. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedars. Yes, the Lord splinters the cedars of Lebanon. The cedars of Lebanon grew to 120 feet high, 30 feet around. And His voice splintered them. Go back and meditate on Psalm 29. At His voice the deer give birth. Okay, and then in the one verse it says, in verse, in that one, seven, the voice of the Lord divides the flames of the fire. Amen. Think about what God's saying. Okay, so there's a fire coming. Okay, speak the voice of the Lord at it. It'll go around you. It says in Isaiah 43, though you walk through the fire, you will not be burnt. You won't even smell like <coughs> smoke. Amen. Though you walk through the waters, they will not overtake you. Oh, God is so good. Yes, Lord. The voice of the Lord will part that Red Sea for you. The voice of the Lord will move those mountains. I don't care if there's a redwood. He'll plant it up and plant it somewhere else just to get it out of your way. But you've got to know the power of the voice of the Lord. The voice of the Lord sent His grace to your hard heart and softened it. So you said, I'm a sinner. I need a Savior. Now you're a saint of God in Christ. You're no longer sinners. You're saints. Amen. 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 You're redeemed children. Amen. Hallelujah. That's another thing I've been going over lately because some of the people got to hang up on that, oh, I'm just a lowly sinner. No, you're not. 
No, you're not, because God's voice will tell you, you're my child. You've been washed in my blood. You've been sealed with my Holy Spirit. The Bible, God's voice says we are saints of God in Christ Jesus. The voice of God says you're the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. The voice of God says you're His redeemed, and let the redeemed say so. Amen. That's who you are in Christ. Your own nature died on the cross. Is it there? Of course it is. Get over that. It's okay. But know who you are. Don't run around telling people I'm just a sinner. No, you're not. You're a saved saint of God in Christ Jesus. Know who you are. Keep your head up here. Don't be going like this. That's false humility. Don't go there. Am I perfect? I'm not even close. God reveals it to me every day on my knees. He shows me how I'm not perfect, okay? But you know what's great? He says, but I've called you. I've chosen you. Now go preach my word. Amen. Go speak my voice to people. Hallelujah. Read the word to people. That's my voice. That's who we are. You have power on your tongue, and the power is the voice of God. He's come to live within us, so you speak with the power and the authority. Jesus says, I give you. I give you all power and authority. How dare you not speak to your circumstances in life with the voice of God? Because every answer you need for what you go through in life is in this book. Yeah. And when you speak it, if you believe it, it's going to be. There's not a mountain that can stand in your way when you know who you are in Jesus Christ. There isn't one. Hallelujah. The voice of God. What note did he give you this morning? John eleven forty three. What did he say? Lazarus, come forth. Four days in the tomb. You talk about the voice of God? Like they said, you know how it stinks in there? It didn't stink in there. You know why? Because God was in there. Bless you. God was in there with him. Amen. He, he was probably sitting there with Lazarus going the whole time going, Man, wait till they see this. They're going to think it stinks in here. You're walking out. So just hang on for a couple days. Let's take a nap. I got this. <laughs> Roll that stone away. Lazarus, come forth. Why are you not speaking with the voice of God and the authority you've been given at every circumstance? If you've got a sickness, speak at it. If you've got a spiritual, mental, emotional, physical, financial need, speak the voice of God at it. God, you said, I'm speaking to my circumstance. You'll supply all of my need. Thank you. All of, not some of, all of. Speak at it. Speak with the voice of Almighty God that lives within you. Because I was reading this morning, He backs up His word for His namesake. I was reading that in Ezekiel this morning. If you're not praying for Jerusalem, you, you really need to in Israel. Because I'll tell you why. He turned me to Ezekiel, I think it was in 36, about how everybody around them has turned on them. The whole world has turned on them. Yeah. See, but what's going to happen with the world don't know? They should read the book. Because God's going to arise. Not only are they not going to be driven into the sea, but everybody around them is. Because God's going to arise. And when God arises, the earth will tremble. The heavens will drop forth rain. Because the voice of the God is going to come with a shout and with trumpets. And everybody's going to know who's Lord. Amen. And they're going to see that you don't mess with Israel. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> John, 10th chapter. <laughs> this whole hearing and obeying and submission thing is that if you have a grateful heart and you give thanks like we were singing today, you'll be obedient children. You really will be. Because your desire will be that of Jesus before His Father to do His will. And you'll give thanks for every breath that you have. Because you breathe because God says so. No one else can tell you different. You're here because God ordained you to be here. You're His children. He loves you. In John 10, verses 3 to 5. To Him the doorkeeper opens and the sheep hear His voice. He calls His own sheep by name and leads them out. And when He brings out His own sheep, He goes before them. And the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. Yet they will by no means follow a stranger, but will flee from him, for they do not know the voice of strangers. Yeah, thank you, Jesus. Do you flee from people when they're speaking worldly stuff to you to lead you astray from Jesus, or do you know the difference? If God's told you something, somebody comes to you with something else, you should know the difference. Because God will always come and say, 
You heard my voice. You heard it. You heard it clearly. But you're questioning because he told you something contrary to what you believe. Now somebody's kind of come, and I've had it happen to me. God's told me things, and I'm like, wow, Paul and I were talking about it before. Sometimes God says something to you, and you think you're crazy. And you know what? If you tell other Christians a lot of times what he told you, they're going to think you're crazy. Because I've told people some of my dreams and visions God's given me for this world, and they went, you out of your mind. <laughs> but you know what's good? I know he told me because he spoke to my heart, not my head. I had total peace with their words. And when people came contrary to the word of the Lord, what's in this book, what God has confirmed in my spirit, it disrupted everything. So I said, oh no, you're not of God. You can wear a cross around your neck. You can quote me a thousand scriptures, but I just lost my peace. That means you didn't be, you weren't sent from God. You were sent from the devil. You may wear a cross, you may have a Bible, but you the devil himself can have a nice day go by. Because if anyone comes to you and it's contrary to the ways of peace, the Prince of Peace who died for you, do not let that into your spirit because God's made you a promise. Amen. God keeps His promises. It says in Ezekiel 36, for His name's sake, He's going to back up His word because He's God. Hallelujah. He is God Almighty. Oh, hallelujah. That's and what they're talking about in John all the way back in Ezekiel 34, wow, they, He was talking about the shepherd. See, God always told, that was almost 600 years before in Ezekiel 34, Ezekiel was talking about the shepherd coming to redeem. He was talking about the Messiah. See, so God already, He always foretells what's coming. He says, I'll tell my prophets everything that's coming. But you'll know a real prophet because what he says will line up with the book. It'll line up with the book. If he comes and says, I prophesy you in the name of the Lord, you're going to have a Ferrari by tomorrow and a Learjet by next Saturday. You rebuke them in the name of Jesus. We heard a comedian guy on a Christian radio the other day. He says, all right, your blessings are coming from the lawn in the back, back there. And he's doing this whole thing about it. It was so funny. And he goes, and as soon as your blessings get there, God's going to pull my back away from you. How's that? Oh, no way, men. I mean, see what I'm saying? If they come and everything is worldly centered, it didn't come from the book of holiness and righteousness. It's called the Holy Bible for a reason, because everything that comes out of this book is holy and righteous and true. It says his judgments are true and just. David said that. That was a man that was in a whole lot of trouble with God, huh? I'm all done. Amen. Man of God's own heart. In verse 10, God's voice will tell you in John 10, what does he say? The thief comes to steal, to kill, to destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it more abundantly. Remember something. He disarmed Satan. He rendered him powerless. So if something comes to you, a voice comes to you and says something contrary to spiritually, mentally, emotionally, physically, financially, God restoring and blessing you like the Word says it will. Go back to Joel, the second chapter. He's going to restore all the years to you. He's going to take the latter and the former. He's going to pour all in. He's going to pour a flood on you. It says, I think it's in Numbers, he's Paul Parisian. He'll come in like a flood. He'll wash everything away in front of you, and behold, He'll make all things new. We have a new life in Christ Jesus. Amen. Not of the world, but of the things of the kingdom of God. And God has blessings for us we can't even imagine. Not just in heaven, but here. We don't receive them, bless you. Because we're not doing this. Yes. Abba, Father, I give you thanks. Not because of my faithfulness, but because of yours. <laughs> because you are the living word. You are the voice of creation and salvation. Hear His voice today. And let Him love you and bless you. Oh, man. Hallelujah. Not a good time today. <laughs> Let's talk about the testing of your heart if you really believe and if you're really going to be obedient. Genesis 22. There's great grace, great favor, great blessings, great peace, great joy, beyond anything we can humanly comprehend if we're obedient. If we submit to whatever he says. Paul, this is the one I was telling you about that when we think we're crazy when we hear stuff. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> we all go through it. God's going to tell you something that you can't possibly do, you can't possibly attain, you don't have enough years left in your life to earn it or make it. And he's going to go, I got it. I got it. I'm going to take care of it. He's going to tell you those things. He's told me things I can't even imagine. Genesis 22, verses 15 to 18. Then the angel of the Lord called Abraham a second time out of heaven 
and said, By myself I have sworn, says the Lord, because you have done this thing and have not withheld your son, your only son. Blessings I will bless you, multiplying I will multiply your descendants as the stars of heaven and as the sand which is on the seashore. And your descendants shall possess the gate of their enemies. And in your seed all the nations of the earth shall be blessed because you have what? Obeyed my voice. That was a three-day journey to give back the son of promise to God. Went out there with the wood, made an altar, laid his son on it, and took a knife. How many of you could do that with a child? But look at the result. You talk about a testing of your heart to see how much you obey God. There's not a bigger test in the Bible. Forget the Red Sea, that was easy. God just blew on the ocean and it parted. But that's a testing of His heart. But look at the blessings upon that. And you know why you're blessed? Because of what Abraham did. Who's the father of your faith? Abraham. In Galatians, the third chapter, that seed that he's talking about is Christ Jesus, by the way. You go back and read that in Galatians. It's from verses 15 through 29. Because of what Abraham did, and then what Jesus, the seed that he's talking about there, did on the cross, the blessings of Abraham are ours by our faith in Jesus Christ. That's why it's lined up this way. Israel, the blood of the cross. That's what Abraham did by being obedient gave us his blessings because they all flow from Israel. Why do you think this ministry gives to Israel? That's why. The Bible tells me so, but my heart tells me so. Yeah. My heart tells me to. Not the world, not anything. My heart tells me to give to Israel because I know my blessings come from there. They don't come from the government. They don't come from people. There's one resource of blessings. His name is Jesus Christ. And all that Abraham had, all those blessings that have been multiplying since he obeyed God, keep multiplying. You want to be blessed, you pray for the peace of Jerusalem. You pray for the deliverance and protection of his children Israel because you are blessed because of what Abraham did all the way back there which sent the seed there. There is no salvation unless the seed goes there and falls into the ground and dies and rises again. We don't have a doorway into eternal, into eternal glory. We don't have that unless all this stuff that was prophesied comes to pass. We have to remember where everything comes from. It comes from heaven. Before He made the universe, He knew all this was going to happen. He says, before the world was created, I already wrote it all out. I knew who was going to follow me and who was going to reject me. Does it break God's heart? You bet. That's why I tell you, don't get broken hearted just because somebody rejects your words about salvation or you're trying to lift a brother or sister up and encourage them to get back close to Jesus. You did your part, now move on. Don't be pulling people on your back because they'll drag you down. So many people come on side, oh, I want your help, oh, I want your help. Oh, pray for me, pray for me. Next week it's the same thing. Next week it's the same thing. Next week it's the same thing. You know what they didn't want your help? Like Larry calls them, spiritual bloodsuckers. They're coming there to distract you from the one that's ready to receive. Now when people are going through stuff, God says you stay with them. Because they're working something out. You just walk with them until we work this all out. God will tell you when it's time to step back and go, okay, let them go. It's not you did something wrong. It's that they can't receive or nor do they want to hear the voice of God. Because God's told them something they don't like. I told you, God's going to tell you things. If you give God permission to speak to you today... I guarantee you there's a soul in his house and he's not going to say something to you and you're not going to like it. He's going to say, hey, I've been dealing with this and you got, you got that ear plugged up. <laughs> he's going to come in your other ear. If you let him. Remember, God loves you. He wants you healed and whole and restored. It says we are the body of Christ. His body went here. The same power of love that put him on that cross. The same power that went to that tomb and rose on the third day. The same power that overgave sin and death. The same power 
that went into the blood of Christ Jesus to wash you, make you as white as snow, how can you not want to hear that voice that is so loving and forgiving and Amen. kind and understanding? How can you not want to hear that? His ways are for peace and joy and restoration and healing in every vessel on this planet. There isn't a soul on this planet he doesn't want saved and healed. Amen. There isn't one. They're so wicked. Yeah, well, so are all of you. Maybe some of you aren't like me, but praise God, guess what? I checked the book this morning. I'm a new creation in Christ Jesus. The old things have been washed away. All my sins are washed away, and there's no record of them. So I'm innocent of all men's blood and any sin because God's blood took care of it. So I don't look this way. I look this way to what lies ahead because I know God's got a great plan for all of us. And I'm going to keep preaching it and preaching it until I don't have air in my lungs to tell you you're loved, you're cherished, you're ordained, you're anointed by God for His glory. And there's nothing He won't do for you if you learn to hear His voice. Amen. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I think you're happy someday. Do you know that? <laughs> I'll tell you how much of a blessing you are to my wife and I. You just don't know. We sat there last Sunday night. We were in under session all Sunday afternoon. We got home. We looked at each other. We said the same thing. We miss everybody. We weren't home three hours from potluck, and we'd already missed everybody. That's what family is. That's what family is. That's what family is. You miss them when you're not together. We sat there. We looked at each other. I said, wow. We missed everybody. We just had we just spent seven hours with everybody. But yet we were sitting there Sunday night praying and interceding, and we re we realized what God's done in our hearts to change us, and how He's brought everybody together as a family of one. We missed everybody. We just gotten home. We were praying for two or three hours. We could barely move. We we're in intercession, and we just kind of said the same thing. It was like we didn't want to go home, yeah. because when you're with your family, you are home. Yeah. Now this is a temporary home because that's a permanent home. This is temporary stopover. But it shows you how much God can yes. change you if you let Him when you see the importance of what God has done in our lives. Who you're sitting next to is your real mothers and brothers and fathers and sisters. This is your real family. This is your blood bought family, not human blood. His blood. Amen. Amen. Yes, Lord. But think about the obedience of Abraham, the father of your faith. And did he get it right every day? Last time I checked, he dropped the ball. That thing with the maid, don't you dare. No, 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 no. God allowed that, don't you. Well, Abraham did. No, if that was the old covenant under the law. If you want to go there, go ahead. Break those commandments. We'll, you come back, we'll pray for you. But I'll tell you what. Don't go he did and she did. You don't. What's permissible for others is not permissible under the new covenant. We're under the blood covenant. Remember something. The Lamb of God is your covenant. We talked about it Wednesday, sharing the lamb with people. That was so important. That just came back to me. God gave me some revelation about what we're to share with people. Now some of you that weren't here Wednesday, now that you're here, when you go out to witness with people, stop sharing the Lion of Judah. Start sharing the Lamb of God, the God of love and mercy and peace and forgiveness. Because when you share the Lamb, you're sharing why He came to redeem mankind. He is the Lion of Judah, and when He roars, His voice will be heard, and the whole earth will shake and melt. It will. And that's coming, probably sooner than we realize. Yeah. So from now on, when you go out, share the Lamb of God. The humble Lamb that came and was sinless, and pure, and perfect, and holy, and righteous, and true, and just. Go start sharing the Lamb of God with people. Then you're really sharing the love of God with people. And then their hearts will change. And if not, pray for them because their heart's so hard, only God can penetrate it. You can. Okay, but when you share the Lamb, you're sharing God's love. Amen? Amen. Amen. The voice of God. Isaiah 41.10. You've got to know the difference. That's why it says discern. Test the spirits whether they are of God or not. In 1 John, the fourth chapter. Make sure you know that. Because if it doesn't line up with God's voice, how He speaks out of here to you, then it didn't come from Him. God's not going to bring you confusion or fear or doubt. He's not going to bring any of that to you. He doesn't work that way. Back in Isaiah 41.10. 
This is a great verse. This is just a great verse. Fear not. Fear not. If you have fear and you're listening to fear, it wasn't the voice of God. There's no fear in Jesus. The devil came to him. What did he say? He spoke to the devil and said, get behind me. Goodbye. He spoke. You should speak at the devil and he will flee. Oh, hallelujah. For I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Psalm 29, 11. The Lord will give strength to His people. The Lord will bless His people with peace. Those two verses right there, if you don't hear that, if you're not being led forth by the voice of God in the ways of peace and strength, it didn't come from Him. It came from the devil. Oh my God, you can't do that. Thank you. I know I can't, but I know He can. So when I hear I can't, I know I'm going in the right direction. I know it. Oh, that's not going to happen. Oh, I did hear clearly. Thanks. Let's go. <laughs> because it's true and you're laughing because you know it's true. Every time God's called you to take another step of faith to come a little closer to that mountaintop. So you're sitting up there with Him so nothing ever touches you again. See, you get to the top of the mountaintop and it was Frank Payne or Rick Joyner wrote something when I was a young Christian back in the early 90s. I read a little pamphlet. He says you go through fires going around the mountain. Sometimes the same fire two or three times till he burns that junk out of you. Okay, and then when you get here with Jesus, guess what? You're so burned up, the only thing left is Jesus in there. And you're walking side by side with him in peace and power and victory over everything. That's why you go through fiery trials. So you become less, so he becomes more. So when you speak, the voice of God's going to come off your tongue. Like I said, the devil approached Jesus in the garden and said, If you're this really... Really? You asked me that? You've got to be kidding. I kicked you out of heaven. Really? Um, <laughs> he answered with what though? The voice. This is the voice of God. Learn to speak it with the power and the authority you've been given as His children. And there's nothing. Once you learn that, and you have that where? In your heart. You'll walk out the door of the demons and the devil himself will run for the mountains for cover. Because you're going to speak with the voice of God and darkness has got to flee. Because you've been given that authority. The voice of God has been given to you. But if you want to do it your way, and I'm, like, I'm warning you now, do not use this as a weapon against people. Oh, you know how many Christians do that? Oh, I get hit every day from Christians. Oh, sure. I've been praying against for almost 23 years of ministry. So, guess what? I'm still here. How about that? You know why? Because God says no weapons formed against me will prosper. God says what I've begun in you, nothing's going to stop me from fulfilling my purposes for you. If you're obedient, I will move oceans. I will move the stars in the heavens. I will change world events just because you're obedient to me. Look what happened with Abraham when he said, yes, Lord. Look what happened when the Son of God said, yes, Father, not my will, your will be done. I'm going to go to this cross because we're going to save mankind this way. I know my mission. I know my purpose here. He listened to the Father and to no one else. <coughs> Think about that when you listen to the Father and you say, yes, Lord. But do not use this. This is a weapon against darkness. This is a victorious, blessed, healed, prosperous, restored life. But don't start speaking this at people. Because the one who wrote this book will come for you. It will come for you. This is a weapon against darkness, against sin, not against people. God will deal with your enemies. I was reading some Psalms the other day. And he starts telling me all these Psalms about the enemy being just wiped out by God. Don't even worry about those who prosper in their way, ungodly ways, because their money is going to mount up with wings as eagles and fly back to heaven, it says in the Proverbs, and then I'm going to give the wealth of the wicked to the righteous. Because I got this all planned out. They think they know stuff, but I know everything and I own everything because He is God. Amen. And believe me, something knows that are doing wickedly out there and making money wickedly. God's, it says the Bible in Proverbs is that it's going to mount up with wings. It's going to fly back to where? Heaven. Because that's the rightful owner of everything. Yes. Mankind is not. I don't own anything. I'm owned. I'm a purchased possession and so are all of you. That's what gives me victory over everything. My daddy owns everything. 
What do you mean your father owns everything? I said he owns it all. The whole universe, every star, every fish, every bird, every human. My God owns it all. And if I belong to him and he says Abraham's blessings are coming here so we can go be a blessing to somebody else, I'm in. I don't know about you, but I want so much coming in that we run to give it away because that's what the body of Christ should look like. Because in the book of Acts, it was. They made sure everybody was fed and clothed and housed. Nobody went without. Because you know what the key was in Acts? It says no one considered anything their own. They had ownership with God settled. He owned it all. They knew everything they had was a gift from heaven. We can't give away enough, amen? Amen. Fast as you give it away, it'll come right back to you because God's that faithful to watch over His Word and He will perform it because it says so. The voice says so. Remember something. Everything in here is His voice. If it don't line up with this, don't listen. Amen. <laughs> this is the one I got last night. Talk about changing a man's studies. I said, what do you mean take all that out? You yeah, have me study this stuff all week long. We, it's this. It's just, you know, that love thing. I don't, I don't need your help. I need your obedience. Now take that out and put this in. Okay, got it. This was, if you have your Bibles, turn to Haggai, the first chapter. You know, they come out of exile. Okay. And the problem at the time was they were living in nice houses. They was living good. But they weren't listening to the voice of the Lord. And the temple was left half rebuilt. They was doing good. They were living good. They had nice clothes. They had good food. They had their maids. They had all that good stuff, right? And they were all dressed up. The temple laid there half refinished. God told them to rebuild the temple. God told them to rebuild the temple. They was living good. When God tells you to do something, I want to know how fast you react. Because you're going to see people repent real quick here. Because in the days of the prophets, first of all, they were all hated. Because they didn't come and say, Jesus loves you like I do every Sunday. <laughs> they said, come and turn from your wicked ways and repent or God's going to strike you dead. A little bit different today, isn't it? Because mm -hmm. the message of the prophet today should be a warning. It should be a correction. It should be a call to repentance. Because the whole body of Christ needs to repent. But it should be of the love of Jesus. Because the prophet of today, if he also doesn't bring love, then he's not a prophet of today. He's not. I was under some very powerful men and women of God in California. They're one of the ones that really taught me that. They said the prophets of today are different. If they don't speak of my love, then they weren't sent by me. Because oh, no. I was reading all these Old Testament prophets, fire coming down, burning up 400 people. Oh, wow, this is cool stuff. Man, I don't have to blow anybody up anymore. Praise God. This is good. You know, oh, wait a minute. Go to Luke. What spirit are you of? Oh, love. Oh, never mind. Uh, <laughs> see, so the prophet of today, should he be speaking the word of God with boldness and authority and repentance and correction? Yes, he should. But if he doesn't come with the grace of God and the love of God, then he wasn't sent by God. Because that means he's bringing a judgment and there's only one allowed to judge and he saves and loves, he doesn't judge. Judgment day is coming. That's the day of wrath. And I praise God that we don't have to face that. Now that's what was going on here. So then he says to Haggai, then Haggai the Lord's messenger spoke the Lord's message to the people saying, I am with you, says the Lord. So the Lord stirred up the spirit of Zerubbabel, the son of Shealtiel, the governor of Judah, and the spirit of Joshua, the son of Jehozadak, the high priest, and the spirit of all the remnant of the people. And they came and worked on the house of the Lord of hosts, their God, on the 24th day of the sixth month in the second year of King Darius. Now guess what? They responded. They responded. Back then, people didn't respond to the prophets right away. They grumbled, they got mad, they used to threaten to kill him. Ask Isaiah when you get to heaven, they cut him right in half. Okay? <laughs> they killed the prophets. They stoned them, they killed them, they put them in prison. But they responded. And that thing got finished, lickety-split. You know why? Because they obeyed the voice of God. 
Haggai called them to repentance. So what did God do? He stirred up their spirit again. He stirred up the church needs a stirring. We need to have a stirring inside to be awakened to the things of God again. To hear the voice of God again. So that we go out and make a difference in this world with no fear of anything. Nothing should bother you. Nothing should bring fear onto you. There isn't a thing in this world that can touch you. If you listen to the voice of God, He will keep you. People are going to be people. You all know that. Humans are humans. And some say they're godly and holy and good. I've known you all too well too much and you've all told me the horror stories, okay? That being said, hold not the sin against them. Don't do it. Don't hold the sins of people against you because the Bible says in Corinthians they've sinned against God. And it is to God they will give an account. Not us. We're to love, we're to forgive, we're to walk in the ways of peace and joy. Never to judge and always to forgive those who sinned. Even Stephen being stoned to death said, God, hold not this sin against them. You talk about Christ-likeness. He was being stoned to death. I know he didn't feel the stone. God already showed me that. As soon as he bowed his head and gave up his spirit, he was gone. So, guess what though? That's how merciful God is. But remember something. If you want to walk in the blessings and the peace and the power of victory in Jesus' name, you will walk with a merciful, forgiving heart. You will hold nothing against anybody. You've all been hurt. I know you all too well. I really do. You've all been hurt. You've been hurt by your brothers and sisters in Christ. That hurts the most because we're supposed to know better. But you know what? Forgive them. You know why? Because it's going to heal you. God will deal with those that hurt people, and they, especially if they do it in His name. Yes. See, don't, see, if you don't know God and you're doing the stuff of the devil, God's more understanding. That's why it says judgment is coming on His house first in Peter. It's coming on His house. That's us. That's why you need to have knee time. These here, we walk with our knees before God. <laughs> These are real important vessels right here. <laughs> They're real important. If your knees are bad, come up here. We'll pray for them and fix them. Because God will fix them right now so you can spend some time where we belong. Because <laughs> it's true. When you really know who you are, you want to speak the voice of God, you spend time on your knees. Because my God will come and says and fill you with His strength. He'll bless you with His peace. He'll give you discernment and wisdom that can only come from heaven and not from the world. You'll see the enemy working when he's not anywhere near you, and God will show you how to avoid things, what not to get into, what deals not to make, who to do business with. Don't be unequally yoked no matter what you do. It is time for you to hear the voice of God again. And if we're going to have the church stirred up, when I read that last night, he had me take everything out that I was going to put in, one of them was Debbie's verses she put on the bulletin. Um, <laughs> it's amazing. He had me take all that out at the end, and he said, no, let them know there needs to be a stirring in my church. There'll be no revival in his church unless we are stirred again with the spirit of love and mercy and power, with the voice of God in our hearts every step we take. Then we will get stirred up. Then we will get our first love back. We will have a passion to see this world saved. I want every soul on this planet saved. Amen. Every one of them. I don't... They may be ugly now. They may be making bombs and blowing people up. All they need is a touch of the love of Jesus. And their hearts will melt. And it's up to us to make a difference. Yes. Amen. It is time for us to stop looking at this world as a lost world. Start looking at it as a saved world. And then God will arise and do something in your life. Amen. Then we can make a difference. I want God to stir up your heart so much you can't even contain it. You're just looking. Who are you going to put in my path today? What did I say last week? Be a witness to someone. Share the Lamb of God with someone. Stop sitting on your calling in here. When you leave here, take the Lamb with you and go share Him with someone so their life can be changed. You're already on your way to heaven. There's too many people, especially in this town, that aren't. It's our job. It's our responsibility to speak the voice of God to the lost souls and say there's hope in Jesus Christ. That's why we're all here. We're not here to just come sit and get a message and sing songs. No, this is the time of fellowship that I look forward to every week. Can't wait to get here on Sunday morning. But guess what? When we leave here, yeah, then we go eat. This is priorities. <laughs> <laughs> but then that being said, guess what? what? Was it two weeks ago? We had 14 people in the nugget. This half this ministry went right down the street. And you know what's good when we got that many people in there? We got like five tables. Yeah. 
So now I gotta pray even louder. <laughs> so the whole we prayed for the whole entire casino last week at, at breakfast. We prayed that God's spirit fill that place. Because I want that, that place turned down and turned into an outreach ministry, a care center, a food bank, and everything else for people that don't have. Because this world needs Jesus. It doesn't need a casino. That's right. Okay, the food's good there. That's fine. But when we go in there, we're making a statement. We're making a statement. Jesus is Lord, and we acknowledge our faith before man in there. And they see that in us. They see the Lamb of God in us. They see God's mercy. So we go from here, and then we go bless people with Jesus. That's how it's to work. Come here, hunger for this. This is great. This edifies. This builds you up. But be ready when you leave here. Okay, God, now I'm all filled up. Now who do I go pour this into? That should be your motivation. What you get poured into from the pulpit goes into you. Should go out there to someone else. Remember the food. The, the food we get here. It isn't the potluck food. It's the living Word of God, the voice of God that goes into you. Now go out and speak it to someone and watch their lives change. That's how blessed we are to be His children. There was so much more I was going to say, but we're not. Mainly because some of you have a choice to make today. You really do? You have a choice to make whether... You're going to allow God's voice to penetrate what's in you. Or you're going to continue to do it your way. And then what happens, you go back and read what happened to Saul and you read that over and over and over again until it's in your heart. Because when we choose not to obey, excuse me, the consequences are deadly. Because I don't know what reason I'd have to get out of bed if I didn't have a life serving Jesus. I don't know whether whatever purpose that would be. Not even for my wife. And I say that in no disrespect to her because between her and Jesus, they're the two main reasons I get up in the morning. Because I know I got purpose. I know I got meaning. And when you're blessed and you have a family to fellowship with, okay, we get the love of Jesus in here. Diane was back there when they were singing. I saw it when I was praying. She actually saw the presence of the Lord and him going right across this wall. And he went right here and he stood by his cross. That's who's in the house. That's who's in this house. God's in this house. It's his house. That's why I say when we come together, we come in a holy, awe and reverential fear of the Almighty God, but the right kind of fear. God is a loving God. He's not a vengeful God. If he was vengeful, all of humanity's already gone. If he was vengeful, he never would have went to the cross freely. Think about that. If God was out to get revenge, he doesn't come and go to the cross. He doesn't walk humbly before his Father. He doesn't sweat out drops of blood out of his pores for us, praying so hard. That's who God is. The God of love. So you have a decision to make whether you really want to hear his voice or not. But this I do have to tell you, some of you are going to hear some things you don't like. I was told some things like this week. I told you, every time I get ready for Sunday, I'm being dealt with during the week. So don't think I've just come up here, oh, it's easy for him to say that. No, it's not. Because I got dealt with on some stuff this week. I told you, stuff gets hidden in here. And you don't even know it's there. But the voice of God that came out of the book this week corrected that. Brought me to tears. It brought me to a more intimate place with Jesus. His whole desires that were so intimate with Him, we have such an intimate love affair with our Maker that there's nothing else that can touch you from that point on. And I'm talking even in your marriages. I'm telling you something. You people that are married, guess what? Make sure your upward relationship is right first, or when you come together, you're going to come together in the flesh and not in the spirit, and it won't be any good. Have your upward relationship right first and you'll love each other the way Christ would have you love one another. Because then you're seeing each other through His eyes and not yours. Ours are human eyes. His are spiritual eyes. He sees everything from a holy perspective. We do not. God is so good, so loving, but some of you have a choice to make today. Do you really want to hear His voice? Because you've already heard it. 
but you didn't like what he said. So it was, and he understands, by the way. He's not here to punish. He's here to love, to heal, and to restore you to oneness to him. That's who God is. That's his voice. His voice is always going to say, I love you. It's going to hurt a little bit, but I love you. <laughs> Remember something. Everything he does is from a love perspective, never from a judgment perspective. It's never that done that way. It doesn't happen. At the end of time, the wrath of God's going to come and burn up this planet. I've already seen the end of the world. And there's nothing left here. There's no new gardens. There's no new flowers. It's gone. It's one big black molten rock, like it says in Peter. It burned up. But guess what? We're not going to face any of that wrath. Because you're going to leave this body, and you're going to take on a heavenly body, and you're not going to touch the wrath of that's to come. won't even touch you. won't come anywhere near you. You're going to go right into a heavenly body, and you're going to see him in all his glory. And that's how it's going to be till there is no ending of it. That's what's awesome about God. We don't have a concept of eternity yet. But that's where you're at in life today. Hear his voice. Be blessed. Be healed. Be restored. Do it your way. Be miserable. Because we can't, we can't do it ourselves. He didn't make us that way. Remember some Your IV has to be hooked into Jesus. You don't need an IV from a doctor. Just like Steve, we pray for Steve. They have him hooked up to the oxygen. He doesn't need that anymore. You know why? God restored his lungs. Because when he went there, he says, By my stripes you shall be healed. You were healed, it says in Isaiah. Not even going to be. You already were. Diane in the back, she's five years free from cancer. God is faithful. God is good. God is holy. God is good. See what I'm saying? God heals. God restores. He does because he says he will. So bow your heads today. Oh, merciful God. You understand us so much better than we understand ourselves, Lord Jesus. God, I just pray right now that you penetrate every heart. Give us those God-hearing hearts. We want to hear your voice and your voice alone. But give us a discerning heart and discerning hearing in our ears. So that when people that are speaking things, we're hearing these voices that are not from you. We just rebuke them and don't receive them. Because God, we don't want any bad leaven in us. We want holy leaven. The leaven that will make us into that tree of life to touch lives and lead them into your arms, oh God. We have life eternal in us, oh God. And we just thank you right now that your voice is stirring up in us a new hunger, a new passion to come back to our first love. That, Lord, we never lose that again. God, change us to be more like you. Without your great grace and Holy Spirit, we won't be obedient. We'll just walk in the ways of the flesh. Because, God, human strength is nothing to you. It's not, it can't accomplish anything apart from you. Thy word says without you we can do nothing. But Lord, I thank you this day, whatever healing needs to happen in the hearts, souls, and minds in this building right here, right now, your grace, your love, just touch everybody, oh God. Have them surrender it all to you, oh God, so that the healing power of your love, oh God, can go through them from head to toe and restore them to oneness and holiness in you alone, oh God. Oh God, come. Come right now and fill this place with the living waters. Refresh us. Renew us. Draw us back to thy side, oh God, to do thy will. I just pray a blessing upon everybody in here. You smile on us, Lord. Comfort us, oh God. And Lord, I know your grace is greater than our flesh. And I just pray a double portion of grace in here right now. It fall on everybody. That they just bow their hearts to you, God. Bow their hearts to you, O oh God. So that you can heal and mend all the damage that's been done by this world. And in Jesus' name we give you praise and honor and glory, Father. Because you are the only one worthy. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah.